want us to talk about what the Egyptian mummies are doing in the Vatican. You can start giving me some answers because I want to know. I, I really want to know what the Egyptian mummies, the Egyptian papyruses and scrolls and tablets are doing in the Vatican. Your Majesties. What the hell are they doing there? These are obviously the property of Egypt. Why is it found in, in the Vatican? Some of you might think that, oh, maybe we're just looking for ways to bring down the name of the church. Oh, come on. Come on, Majesties. Okay. We, we have known that things that are not for you shouldn't be in your possession. So if it is in your possession, how did those things even get there? In the first place, like, how did they get Does it mean the Egyptians just willingly gave it out? Then if the Egyptians willingly gave this to the Vatican, then something is wrong. Are they really Egyptians who are in Egypt? Because I don't see reason why you allow Rome, you allow Italy, to come pick the remains of your ancestors and go showcase it. Like a life mummy. There is a life mummy in the Vatican. Okay. Yes, so. There are papyruses and scrolls and ancient texts that should belong to the Egyptian people. They are in the Vatican. Okay? And then we ask, why is it that there's a lot of things that the, the church does, that is in Christendom, that is, is also in the African spirituality? When I say African spirituality, I hope you won't think like it's some demonic things that are done, it's some eh -eh, way of life. Okay, let's, let's put it that way. I believe a lot of questions might be in your mind. Why is it that a lot of things that are in Christendom are the way of life of the African people originally? So I would tell you that this is our way of life. Christianity just copied it. Some of you be like, ah, in the name of Jesus, we are, we are saved in the name of Jesus. We are kiniko in the name of Jesus. Drop that, let's face reality. Okay? No wonder there are similarities because they took these things, they are studying it, they are practicing it. So they come tell you and say, this thing is bad, it's not good. All these signs you see are bad, they are not good. But what are they doing? They have those signs. They are building on those signs. So everything these three religions that are popular right now have, Everything that they, they, the belief system and everything that they have, that they are practicing, are all built on the way of life of the African people. So this is what you should have in your head. Everything, every practices are built on the way of life of the African people. So if the African people had way of life like this, then why should Europe come to Africa and say they are the ones that brought Christianity to Africa? No, they are the ones that brought the idea of a creator to Africa. When Africa already had a concept of a way of life like this, when Africa already had the 42 laws of Ma'at that shaped their life, we've studied that here, right? When you go to the 42 laws of Ma'at, if you are a human and you study that keenly and live by it, I tell you, you'll be a living saint. So if the African people already had the 42 laws of Ma'at, then you want to tell me these people that have the 42 law of Ma'at are not spiritual people. But you want to come and tell us that the 10 you stole from these 42 are yours. You just want to come and show us the way. So we had 42 and you say we were living in darkness. And then you came and stole the 10 and came back and said, okay, we are the ones that are bringing this to you. Look at the 42 law of Ma'at. Sure, compare the 42 law of Ma'at with the Ten Commandments, and you understand what I'm saying. But still, the gullible ones will still think that we are the ones that are gullible. It's quite unfortunate. I wouldn't blame you. It's the consciousness that you have been suppressed under. So I want, us, want to take you to this guy. He has been going around the world, all right, um, exposing occultic symbols in cathedrals and churches. They will tell you that uh, religion is a continuation of some of these things. Some of you think that is a different thing. So they tell you to demonize it behind though they are living they are living on top of it. They are building their life on top of what they say you should demonize. I am currently here in Rome. And being in Rome, I'm waiting for the tour group that is supposed to take me inside of oh, there. You see there? No, where's man? Yeah, that side there. You can see the lot of crowd of people over there. Yep, that is people that are waiting in queue. I don't know if I can show you properly. Yeah. See, that is Kwame. Hey, Kwame, say what's up. Oh, 
Uh -huh, that is coming over there. <laughs> so we are waiting for the queue, you know. Uh, I speak six languages. So, and I didn't use them. Okay, mm. now please have it. So the tension tablet. It's a funeral tablet. I hope you guys are seeing. To the Mason order. Do you see the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs? This is a funeral tablet of priests. Do you see that? This is a funeral tablet. That there is Anubis removing the heart of the man. And this is how the process of embalming is done. Where the heart is removed, these are the priests. So you see here in Rome is where you have a funeral tablet. Are you guys seeing? This is an altar. Do you see this? This is an altar of consecration. You can see the different points. One, two, three, four. It's an altar of consecration. And I believe it should be the altar of embalming. When a person is to be embalmed, you know, and the heart is to be removed, it starts from here. Do you guys all see this? These are all altars. Altars of Embalming in the Vatican. Do you see? Yes. Do you see? table this here is a graveyard this is a graveyard and many of the things you are seeing right here are nothing but sapokabos sapokabos of um, i don't know how to call it coffins these are coffins of ancient egyptian practice you've been seeing it in the television well here you are seeing it directly from me. These are offerings. These are all coffins. Can you see? These are coffins. Sapokagos. Like there, that place there that I just showed you was the place whereby it shows the process of embalming the individual where when the person is dead, they remove the, you know, the dead body, the, the heart. And now this is how the coffin is. These are the different coffins. Are you guys seeing? These are all different coffins. All coffins. You guys are saying properly and in the coffin it has engraving of how the soul is supposed to pass through the different 
point at which the soul is supposed to pass through. You know? You can see. You see, the, look at that. First of all, the soul has to pass through these demons. The female demons. You see the people. You can see. Oh, it's not so bad. You can see. You know? That is the soul. And the upward journey of the soul. You see that? And where the soul is going to be judged. And then up. Here, right here, is a life moment. Do you see? This is a life moment. A life moment. Are you seeing? This is a life moment. A life moment. Right here. In the bottom. Do you see? Majesty, that's a Yoruba man from Nigeria who's traveling around the world to expose to us occultic symbols in churches and cathedrals, right? Because they say those symbols are occultic. So what are you doing with occultic symbols? <laughs> okay, implanted secretly in places in churches and cathedrals. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave the, the link to his channel at the description so you check him out. Now, what are we seeing? You have to be careful in the world that we are in because I have discovered that what the world points to you as evil sometimes might even be the truth that you have been searching for all the years. What the world points to you as good and employ you or advise you to, to, to practice or go into might be the evil that you should run away from. Because these people will never tell you the truth. They will hide the truth and tell you something else. They always try their best to divert your attention. Remember the issue of South Africa? I just want to give you that as an example. When we are here talking about Chidima, oh, Nigerians were like, oh, what, what, what? South Africans were, were hot. Everywhere was on fire because of Chidima. Oh, she's not South African. Oh, the mother stole an identity. She's an identity thief, whatever. Something was going on in South Africa. Okay? Anyway, like I said, that was the last video I made about South Africa. So I don't want to get involved anymore with South Africa. But why the media diverted your attention to Chidima's case? They were busy doing something. So because they know that particular one would go viral and people would be aware of what they were doing, they tried to push this narrative of cheating to the public. So the whole of South